just want you to, to lead me, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Father God, um, you just have your way uh, in Jesus' name. We just thank you for giving us uh, wisdom and understanding, Lord, about how to overcome uh, addiction. And uh, Lord, we thank you for direction. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you just lead me and whoever else, Lord, if we decide to um, uh, get everyone here to participate, Lord, that you just have your way, Lord. You have the preeminence in Jesus' name. Amen. There you go. That got just got rid of uh, Diotrephes. All right. The Lord has preeminence here. Um, okay. Share. Okay. Um. All right. Okay, um, look, uh, with the, the, the teaching, there's two teachings. I did a, a teaching originally on uh, addiction, overcoming addiction, and um, we've, we've decided to redo it um, because there's so much more. You know, I mean, we did that teaching, I think, three or four years ago, and there's so much that we've learned, you know, with dealing with addiction. and um, you know, there was stuff there the Lord wanted me to um, 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 add to that, all right? But um, one of the big areas here with addiction is, is obviously um, understanding, really truly understanding um, the flesh, you know, um, and, and Paul goes through this in Romans 6. I mean, uh, the flesh is, is where addiction is is being fed from it's walking in the flesh you know if we walk in the spirit then um we're not going to be a slave to addiction because addiction is firstly i just mentioned with addiction addiction the spirit of addiction uh works with a whole team of uh, principalities other spirits it's a it's a network okay and um, they, these, the, the enemy all work together with, with one agenda, obviously, and that is to kill you, all right? Um, um, and um, how to uh, annihilate the enemy um, is, is what we need to recognize now. Um, you know, I saw some words last night, Lord, just reminding me of them. You know, Jesus, you know, when he made covenant with us, I mean, what Jesus did on the cross is he 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 played our part. You know, God God did his part, but he also did our part or where he came as a man, all right, and he did what we couldn't do. He 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 not only he did everything. All right. He did everything for us. He he already had a plan and, you know, God is God and he, he's uh, he's free. You know, he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. But in order to redeem mankind, he played our part. He came and, and did it for us and even did that with Abraham. You know, he put he, he had to put him to sleep, you know, to when he cut covenant with him because he didn't want man to have any part of this. One thing we've got to understand with overcoming addiction is, yeah, we can't do it in our strength. We can only do it in his. And God has, has played his part, and he's done it already. He's, he's annihilated death. He's annihilated sin. He's overcome everything that would um, enslave us. Okay? And we've got to understand that if, as soon as we try to get, um, get on that pedestal and try to do that uh, ourselves, then we are going to fall from grace and we're going to fall into the enemy's hands and we're going to become um, slaves to sin, slaves to addiction. All right. So Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, um, addiction is, 
is really tied in with um, um, uh, rejection, all right? It's not knowing the love of God, and it's not knowing God, and it's not knowing the truth. It's not knowing the gospel. Um, it's not knowing the, the true church and how um, Christ, what Christ died for was uh, was for our freedom and, and understanding um, how how Satan works, all right? So we're going to go through this because I really, uh, uh, if you go through the previous teaching, uh, Addiction 1, then, um, you know, we cover, the Lord covered a lot of areas in that teaching and, and there's, and there's such a big teaching here it's it's incredible but uh there's a foundation and, and in romans 6 uh it's important for us to understand okay these fundamentals because you know addiction is really um hooked in with um um rebellion you know and uh um we've got to come out of rebellion you can't help anyone that's in addiction and if you're in addiction you can't god can't even help you if you don't repent so repentance is the foundation and the key to overcoming addiction all right so you know god says you know my people are destroyed through a lack of knowledge um, you can't destroy this thing um you know um without repentance and you know in the in the secular world you know they, they'll say things like once an addict, always an addict, you know, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, or, you know, uh, once a, a prostitute, always a prostitute. Well, that's not true in Christ, all right? That's that's a lie. And you've got to come out of agreement with that because all um, the secular world will do is try to cover uh, addictions with psychology, which is effectively fig leaves, all right? So it's just trying to cover the shame of your nakedness. And, and that's what um, a, addiction is. It, it's putting people in shame and, and, and nakedness, all right? It's, uh, it's not addressing the problem um, once and for all. And, but, and what Christ does is he, he uh, destroys completely the root of uh, addiction he'd pull this root out because you know addiction is just um really the consequence of um uh, 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 a deeper thing and that has a root and it has roots and i think there's a um, i've got a slide here on that with addiction's roots you know and there are roots and what in order, in order for us to destroy allow the Lord to destroy our addiction, we've got to pull the roots out. And the roots, okay, are all rooted in basically um, rejection and unloved, not knowing, okay, the love of God, not knowing Jesus, not knowing the tree of, you know, the source of that tree of life, you know. Um, and uh, there's a, there's a slide here which I'll come to in a minute that shows you all those roots. It shows you the tree and all the roots, okay? So we'll, we'll come to that. But first of all, I just want to um, go over this nature, all right, of sin, okay? Um, uh, because this is what so important for us to understand, okay? So Romans 6, uh, uh, dead to sin but alive to God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Wow. I mean, you know, this is where this is foundational. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I mean, this is foundation. This is when we understand this, okay, we can overcome addiction, all right? For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also 
be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that the, our old man, you see, the old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. So slaves of rejection, slaves of all the roots and all the, the demons that work with rejection. You know, um, um, we need to come out of slavery, right? Uh, for seven, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, um, but under grace, okay? So, um, you say there is now no condemnation in Christ. You know, one of the big things and hooks that Satan uses with addiction is shame, all right? And, um, uh, but also under all of that that stops people from coming out from under addictions is pride and it's leviathan all right and uh this is the thing with a lot of addicts a lot of addicts are quite comfortable really um with their addiction because their addiction is is false security it's false comfort okay it's it's masking and it, they're hiding behind uh the real issue which is their own rejection all right, so the demons have tricked people into giving them a false sense of security by um, allowing this thing that brings them comfort, whatever it is. We all have uh, addictions to some degrees. You know, most of us do. I mean, you know, it can be food as well. Uh, food becomes a, a, an addiction and uh, sport. We've covered all these areas of addiction in life and really it's the world you know, coming out of the world and being separate, all right? So um, it's something which uh, we need to identify um, the roots, the roots of rejection, I mean, re roots of uh, addiction, all right? And it's in the flesh. Addiction is in the old man. It's in, it's in that old, you know, if, we, if we're... In addiction, in whatever, we are literally allowing the flesh to have dominion over us. Right? So um, the flesh uh, is antichrist. It doesn't want to submit to God. And God's answer to sin uh, was a tree. You know, sin came into the world um, by a tree. It was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God's answer to destroying sin uh, and redeeming mankind from out of slavery and addiction was another tree. Okay? And that tree was the cross. And we've got to understand, all right, the message of the cross because, you know, we have two trees and then we have a third tree which leads us back. It brings us back to the tree of life. So, you know, Satan managed to, um, you know, distract and, and um, deceive mankind through the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God's brought us through his grace back, all right, to the tree of life through the, the cross, all right? So it's these trees, you know, <laughs> amazing, isn't it? But, you know, like trees, addiction has roots, and that roots are all hooked in. Okay, with uh, the curse and, and the curse that came in through the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But God's solution, all right, is the, is the cross, which is another tree. And uh, Jesus, he, he did that for us, all right. He, he paid it for us. He, he, he played our part. Isn't that amazing the way God played our part for us? You know, I think, I think that's amazing that God you know, knew that we couldn't do it through the weakness of our flesh. God's come in and he's come down, uh, he's prepared a body and he's done it for us. So first of all, we've got to get an understanding of um, the grace and the, the way of escape. So there is a way of escape. And I think this, this is what Paul in Romans 6, 6 is doing. He's clarifying and preparing uh uh, us to understand what our wrestle really is with.
I wrestle is with the flesh. It's that old man. And, you know, we can talk about the enemy, the demons, and they use the, the flesh. That's where their power is in, is that old, um, that old flesh, that carnal nature of man. So um, it says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. And that's what addiction is doing. You see, addiction is holding, holding us uh, in bondage in an area of our flesh. Now, you know, there is hope. You know, God, you know, sanctification and salvation is a process. So God is, is we're working out our salvation with Christ. He, he, you know, we get saved. You know, originally we're justified instantly with Christ. But the sanctification uh process is is part of salvation all right and it's working out our salvation working out our sanctification in christ in the holy spirit so we're submitting to god okay and allowing him to transform us we spoke about that with the soul the area of the soul all right so we're going to keep moving here so first of all very important to understand our position all right we're now uh walking in the newness of life all right, and know that God is, um, we've been crucified with Christ and it's no longer what we live. So rebellion is is what is holding people captive, all right, in addiction. It's so important to come out of agreement with this. You see that rope in that picture, all right? Um, you know, the, the devil's got um, people in addiction, all right, bound because of ignorance and rebellion. All right, and it's it's not knowing or not wanting to know the truth. All right, but so okay, so now we come into the knowledge of the truth. We're coming into the knowledge of the truth and knowing how to actually um, become um, free. So we go to um, uh, the, uh, the, we go here to from continuing in Romans 6, knowing that Christ has been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. You know, and that's where we are now. We are in Christ. Um, so it's our identity. So for the, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. And that's where we've got to come with addiction. We've got to understand that now um, we we've been sanctified and, and we've got to present our bodies as living sacrifices, all right? Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God through Jesus Christ. You see, overcoming addiction is understanding, all right, this, understanding that likewise you also need to recognize, because this is by faith, this this miracle that happens um, is, is not psychology. This is not psychology. This is not, all right, us trying to work it out ourselves. This is, all right, God doing it all for us. He's done it already for us. Okay, all we've got to do is know the truth, and the truth will then be able to set us free because it's purely by faith. So likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God. So now it doesn't matter about your past, okay? You're a new creation. Verse 12, therefore do not let sin in reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. Now, you can't do that in your strength, okay? But you have to come out of agreement with it and you have to repent, okay? And we'll come to that. The, the, the Bible talks about this, all right? Repentance. Okay, because the only reason addiction has a, a, a power over you is because you've given it legal right. You've agreed to it. You've got to hate sin, man. You've got to you've got to recognize it for what it is. Okay, um, all right. Addiction is is you feeding off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's not you, all right, feeding from the tree of life. All right, it's you actually allowing yourself, all right, to be comforted, okay, by, all right, the lust of your flesh. I think we mentioned that last week, the lust of the flesh. 
And it says here in 12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lust, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, all right, the pride of life. It's all to do with self-glorification, okay? Um, 13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. I mean, this just sums it up. I mean, when I was meditating about how to overcome um, addiction, this is one of the key points here uh, is understanding Romans chapter 6 and the chapter 7 and chapter 8. They really address, address this whole area. Uh, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace, you see. You know how addiction is? Addiction is a, a law. You're under a law. You're under the law of sin and death. Well, you, you, how do you overcome the sin of law, a, a sin of uh, uh, death? It's the sin of um, the law of sin and death. You overcome it by abiding in the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. And, and that means, guess what? You surrender and you, you surrender to Christ, surrendering to a, a greater power. This is a greater power, all right, because sin has power. Sin is a power. It's a force, okay? It's spiritual, okay? And it is slavery. It, it puts you in chains, so where do you want to be? You want to be a slave to sin or you want to be, we spoke about that in the first teaching about, you know, how with, with, uh, with uh, uh, now your situation in Christ, now being raised from out of that death, that body of death, now you're biding in the spirit in Christ. You're now a new creation. You're a pilgrim in this world. You're not you're in the world, but not of the world. You're now okay a citizen of heaven you're now a king you're a priest okay you're an ambassador man you've been you're royalty now okay for sin shall not have dominion over you but you are not under the, the law you're not under these laws of this world you're not under this law of the devil you're not under the law of addiction you've got to understand this first okay this thing might look like it's got power over you, but guess what? God has got a way. And, and this is the first key is understanding God's way. And this way is uh, through a tree. You know, God's way is through a tree. Now, he did it. He, 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 he what do you, you know? What, the words I saw last night were so powerful. Yeah, he played our part. He played your part. Whoever you are listening right now, Christ paid your part to overcome that addiction. He paid it, all right? He was tempted in all ways, but he resisted and he did not submit to it. And then it was laid upon him, okay, and he overcame it. So he knows he is our great high priest, okay, and he is our mediator, and he understands. You see, Christ understands your addiction. He knows your addiction. He knows what you're going through. He suffered. In, he took that curse. He knows the temptation that you've been through, going through. He knows the weakness of your flesh. He knows it all because he has compassion on you. He has mercy he came to set you free, and he's there right now with you to set you free. And he wants you to know that. He understands. He's a God of mercy. He wouldn't have come and done all of that for us if he had no compassion. He has compassion. He was tempted in all ways, but he did not sin. So he is now our mediator. He's our advocate. He's the one that we, all right, he's the bridge where we, we cross that gulf, 
you know there's like an abyss and we feel like we're on the wrong side but christ has not rejected us he's not cast us off he's there and he's reaching out his hand you know that hand and, it, and that hand as a as a as a is a pierced hand it's pierced and he's holding it out to you because he paid the price for your addiction all right and that's why sin shall not have dominion over you because you're not in, under the the law of sin and death anymore you're not under even the law of moses you're not under that okay because that there's another area which we spoke about last on the last teaching you trying to do things in your strength through your own way your own strength god's you need god's strength we all need god's strength if we're suffering addiction we've got to get hold uh, get a revelation of how to get hold of god's strength all right because it's by grace and guess what his grace has already done it for you so how do we get this grace this grace is what sets us free it's coming into his grace and his grace is perfect love and in grace is perfect love because it's unconditional he's not going to hit you over the head or scold you he's going to have compassion on you all right to come out of that place of bondage all right and and set the captives free Isaiah 61, all right? Um, all right, so from slaves to sin to slaves of God, all right? So we have a choice. So if you, you know, you're traveling down that road, as you can see in the picture, you've got to choose. You've got to choose life or death. Which one are you going to choose? And this is something that's sad, but a lot of addicts, all right, um, unfortunately, it, it, you know, it, with addiction, um, it's blinded us, blinded us to the truth, to life. Because, you know, a lot of us have had our conscience seared, and that's what the devil does. The devil, the more we enti are enticed by sin, the devil sears our conscience, so we don't, we're not able to see clearly. Romans 6, but the word of God will allow us to see clearly. So we've got to get the word. All right, Romans 6, verse um, 15. What then? Um, shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are ones, that one's slaves whom you obey, whether to sin leading to death or to obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that... Uh, though you were slaves to, of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Now, this is very key. Here is the heart, all right? Now, it mentions the heart. And that's uh, same thing I said as well in James 4. One of the big keys to getting delivered from addiction is James 4. Um, and I've, I've got a slide on there in here. Uh, 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 no, I don't have a slide on that one yet because I haven't put that one together yet. But I will go through that on the next teaching. All right. Um, all right. So it's an issue with our heart. We have to identify, okay, where this iniquity is. And addiction is an iniquity and it's in your heart. All right, but it's not in the new heart, it's in your old heart, it's in that uncrucified heart. So, if your heart is not every part of your heart, were in your heart, in that part of you that still has to be the Lord has to purge out the leaven, all right. And this is what this is. You know, in the book of Exodus, we see how God delivered the Israelites from out of slavery to bondage to Egypt was, first of all, in preparation for that. They had to um, scrape and cleanse out the leaven from out of their houses. So then when the angel of death came over, the blood was over their door 
posts, okay, the, the, the sin couldn't ha have any place in them. It wasn't found there. Okay, so that atoning blood was a, a, a temporary covering, prophetic of the covering that God was going to give us, which was um, his shed blood for us. All right, so in that area of our heart, there's still areas of our heart where we've got to scrape the leaven out. Scrape the leaven out of your heart. Okay, what is leaven? Leaven is, is, um, is false. The Bible describes it as false doctrine. It's the lies of the enemy. It's sin. Okay, so it's the enemy puts leaven into us, right? And what, what destroys uh, man is leaven. It's the lies. It's, it's the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's tr us trying to do things ourselves. It's us trying to cover our shame you know, of our nakedness with fig leaves, as we, we were talking about that last week. So here... Um, it says, um, uh, you know, about sin. Is Are we going to continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall, how shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? So where are you mentally? Are you identifying? Have you understood the gospel? Because this is what the Lord really showed me yesterday. Is, you know, his grace is amazing, but it doesn't give us a license to sin. But we've got to understand that he has set us free from um, condemnation and everything. He's can set us free from the law of sin and death. We're not of this world anymore. So what, how, how are we going to walk? Are we going to walk in that revelation of the newness of life where there is no condemnation? Okay, so you're, you're with our addictions. Are we going to come out of agreement with them now? All right. Um, okay, so it says here, or do you not know that as many as us were baptized into Christ? Sorry, just flip the sorry back. Knowing that Christ was being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. But death... For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. All right? So likewise, reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God. So it's revelation, all right? It's understanding, okay? Um, we've been bored. We no longer are our life. It's no longer your life. You belong to Christ, okay? So Romans 6 all right, so we're just back on Romans 6, verse 15 here, because this 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 uh, uh, goes, this, sorry, I'll just read, what then shall we say? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? Certainly not. Or do you not, not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are the one slaves whom you obey? whether sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that through, though you were slaves to sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. Okay, now that's where we were. That's the key, the heart. All right? And iniquity is in the heart. So we've got to cleanse. Bible says cleanse you, you, your heart, you sinners. You know, cleanse your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit, all right, to bring up and come out of agreement and repent for what's in your heart. False comfort, which is what these addictions are. It's, sl it's slavery, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you become slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. You see, this is, a, this is where the addiction is. It's in the weakness of your flesh. All right. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and unlawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. So there's going to be a, a, a cost. This, this will cost you. All right, coming out of addiction will cost you. And, you know, none of us, you know, it's a miracle that God delivers us if we submit. But when we make that choice, 
and it's going to hurt, you know, because it's comfort, you know, it's false comfort. Addictions to whatever is a sin, it's false comfort. It's pleasing to your flesh, you know. It feels good, whatever it is. You might be addicted, whatever you're addicted to, it feels good. It, it gives you, okay, a, a sense of um, a relief, doesn't it? A comfort, all right? But it's going to cost you when you come out of agreement with it because uh, you're going to feel uncomfortable uh, in your flesh, all right? For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Okay, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? You see, so in addiction, you're you're ashamed. If you repent now, okay, and you um, um, come out of agreement with it, you've got to be careful now not to have shame, all right, because shame will hold you in bondage, all right? It will expose your nakedness, but you've got to understand now in Christ you're no longer naked. You've now been clothed with the robe of garment of his righteousness. You know, and, and one thing we can look at is the prodigal son here. The prodigal son is a classic example of coming out of addiction, all right? You know, coming out of the, the pig swill, all right, and realizing, okay, that there is, a, there is hope. There is hope. You see, when, when the prodigal son was in that pig swill, he realized he had hope. He suddenly remembered his father's house. And he was quite ha happy to be a slave in his father's house. But when he comes back, you know, the God puts a ring on his finger and puts a, you know, a garment on him, okay, the robe. And this represents Christ giving us the robe of righteousness. And, you know, and he put, uh, uh, um, accepts him, okay, as, and he's even looking out for him. You know, he sees him coming. And Christ is wants to welcome you. There's, there's no shame. God will, will he, he understands. There is no shame. So don't be um, fearful and shameful okay god has paid a price he paid the price so that you can be free he did all of that for you to be free he loves you he wants you to come back to him he's he's calling to you you know he's calling to you like the father with the prodigal son he's calling you he's looking out for you come you know don't let the enemy don't look back don't look back to the pig swell as you enter and you come towards christ don't look back at that pig swirl because the enemy, all right, is trying to entice you back because there is a better place, all right? Um, and that's what it's saying here. But now having been set from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. So don't be deceived with addiction. Addiction is Satan's device, all right, to bring you back into slavery to sin. But when we understand this, all right, um, we, we, we're going to come out from it. And you have to make a choice. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You know, we've got to bear fruit. And that's going to cost you. There is going to be a price. The Bible says to present your bodies as living sacrifices. All right, so the flesh, where is the war? The war is in our members, it's in our flesh. And we, we'll, we come to that um, um, uh, in the next chapter, but this, we can t say, um, has then what is good become death to me? Certainly not. I think this is seven, we've crossed into seven, yeah, uh, Romans seven. Uh, has then what is good become death to me certainly not but sin that it might appear sin producing death in me through what is good so that sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin you see paul, paul here is seeing the weakness of his flesh how his flesh okay um was 
he was a slave to his own carnal nature, his own old flesh. All right. And what the law did was it just um, it, it, it excited and it, it strengthened sin in him. Okay. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal sold under sin. So there he was. He was in a state of slavery. But what am I doing? I do not understand for what I will to do that I do not practice. So can you understand with rejection, you know, rejection? No, yeah, with rejection and with addiction, okay, um, this is blocking and stopping people and, in, and, and holding them in bondage to the flesh because it's saying for what I will to do that I do not practice. Because, you know, people that are repentant in addictions, well, wherever we are, and we're addicted to something, you know, we, we, we don't want to do those things, but then we, we end up doing them. Well, why do we do them? Well, it's because of the weakness of our flesh, all right? Okay, so it says, um, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, and I, I agree with the law that it is good, okay? but now. It is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. So the sin nature in addiction, all right, is what's driving people through their flesh. Okay, so the flesh, and that's where the demons are. The demons are operating through the flesh. Now, we, we, I, I just want you to look back and understand that God's answer to the flesh is crucifixion. All right, it's death. He, this, we're leading up. This God is... You know, Christ dealt with the flesh, and the way he dealt with the flesh is it has to die, okay? So, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present in me, but how to, to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. You see, isn't that addiction? You know, addiction is that. It's it's we've all got to we've all got to confront this man. This is something which we've got to look at it through through what it is, and the word of God makes it obvious. For the good that I will to do, I do not not do, but the evil I will not to do that I practice. Now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. All right, so, you know, your flesh is sinning, all right? Your flesh, you have a body of flesh, and you've got to understand with addiction, that's your flesh, man, all right? You've got to understand, it's not you, that's not your new spiritual man, that's your flesh. Your flesh is doing, all right, what it wants to do and what its assignment is to do, and that is, all right, bring you and kill you, all right, because the, <laughs> the flesh is your own worst enemy, man. It's corrupt. It wants, it, it's, its end is death. That's why the Bible says to walk in the flesh is death. But, you know, it's not you that's doing it. It's your flesh. And it's the, where the demons are. And Christ knows that. He knows your weakness of your flesh. And that's why the Bible now says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. Okay? You've been set free, all right, from that. So God want to bring you out of that power, all right, through love. Because he loves you. You're not going to get out of that. That's why he says there's now no condemnation because he loves you. He wants to draw you out of that obedience to your flesh. All right. And that's where your heart. All right. So where your heart is. Okay. Um, that's where the fruit is. So where, what are you going to do? Are you Is your heart with Christ or is your heart in obedience to your flesh? So repentance. Okay, and, and just there in that picture, Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak, all right? And verse 21, it goes on to say, all right, and this is where God, 
Paul is right now understanding. He's getting a revelation. He's communicating to us there is a way of escape for this, all right, this addiction. I find then a law that evil is present in me, the one who wills to do good, I delight, for I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this is where we get the, the, and understand the message of the cross. Paul is give, giving us God's answer to the, the cross. Remember how we said the, that this, all, this, this nature of the flesh entered in through a tree. Well, God's answer is through another tree. Okay? <laughs> all right? And it's not the sort of tree most man would, would look at or want to go to, all right? And that tree is the cross, okay? So he delivers us, all right, through that tree being the cross. And Paul and, and Moses even, the Lord gave Moses a little um, glimpse at it in the wilderness when they lifted up the bronze serpent. They told him to make a bronze serpent and put it upon a pole. And that bronze per serpent represented that was a tree he put the, the curse upon a, a, a pole, okay, because Jesus became a curse for us, that he would deliver us from that body of death, all right? So that was a type and shadow, all right, and God brings in the real tree, okay? Cursed is he who is hung on a tree. So he took that curse and he made a way of escape for us for this body of death. All right. Thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now, can you see how addiction operates? OK, so addiction is being submitted and serving your flesh. Now, there is no condemnation now in Christ. If you want to get over addiction, you've got to love the truth, but don't get convicted about, I mean, don't get condemned. Conviction is okay, but conviction will bring you holiness because what God can, wants to do is bring you out of that, draw you out of that through his love, draw you out of that, that, that slavery because you're free now. You're, you are no longer a slave to your flesh you're not you have a you have now a choice and this is what I, the lord showed me a while ago is that our freedom in christ we're no longer slave to the flesh you're not you have power over it if you all right attack it from christ if you got to understand that being free in christ okay is now put you in a place where you have now a right to choose. Did you get that? You have a place to choose now. You are in Christ. You can choose to serve the flesh, to serve that addiction, or you can choose, all right, to serve, all right, the law of Christ, the law of liberty, okay, and allow Christ to overcome that obsession and that nature of sin, because your nature now is no longer in slavery. You have a choice. You have freedom. Freedom is there, and it is presented. And that's why, I guess, go back when you see that picture there, life or death, choose. You see that? You have now a choice. Before, you had no choice. See that one on the left? Oh, sorry, that one on the right going to death? That's where you were on before. But now God has brought you to the cross, okay? And you, now you have the right to choose to go down that one of life, all right? <laughs> Don't allow the devil to think, to, to make you think that you have no choice. You now have the, the choice. You have the power. You have the Holy Spirit. 
and he will guide you and lead you out of out of that slavery to um, the flesh okay so we've got to understand it's the flesh all right the carnal mind we spoke about that last teaching your carnal mind is an enemy of god so now you're going to have the mind of christ okay so um all right so it says here watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation for the spirit is indeed willing but the flesh is weak okay so um all right so then we we enter into romans 8 and romans 8 all right now brings you into the law of the spirit okay i'm just going to come to this one here um with zechariah but first it says yeah there is then now no more condemnation for those in christ who walk do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit for the law of the spirit of christ in the law of the spirit of life <laughs> the law of life man uh, in christ has made us free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh god did by sending his son in the likeness of simple flesh on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit and now and then it says for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh you see so with addiction you got to come out of agreement with that that you've got to set your mind on the things above and not the things of this world because what what addiction do is they hold you captive all right to 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 do the 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 flesh's will rather than the spirit's will all right so um whatever addiction you are in the first thing you need to do all right is understand all right the, the word understand what the bible's talking about here and you've got now a right to choose what are you going to choose uh, we all got to do it man it, it's 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 it, we're going to suffer you can you 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 have to be prepared to suffer a little the bible says god will not allow you to be tempted more than you can stand but where the abundance the abundance where our, our heart is there our treasure will be also so what's in your heart is it you know um is it christ or is it you know the flesh is it the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life all right, so here we have in, in Romans 8, go through it, read it, okay, I, I encourage it, it says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, all right, all right, so um, it says, uh, it says here, and this is a big key, um, you know, in, in Romans 7, it talks about the carnal mind being an enemy of God, okay, uh, uh, it says, uh, verse 11, it says, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Did you hear that? Okay. That, all right, what God does is he sanctifies your flesh. I've seen it, man. It's a miracle. This, this, uh, this overcoming addictions is a miracle. All right. What it does is the Holy Spirit comes in and completely removes the 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 um, the, the the power of sin from you. All right. It literally smashes it, and that's why it even says that um, you know that. Uh, with fasting it breaks the yoke of bondage all right so this what it does is it completely cuts off the flesh and that's what the sword of the spirit does remember we we spoke about the sword being a two-edged sword sword it it cuts and it it circumcises it cuts it off all right and that the circumcision now is is a sign of our circumcised heart is a sign of god's covenant with us all right he's the circumcision of the old jews was a sign of covenant well we have a better covenant now all right and he's given us a sword and what that sword does is it cuts off the flesh it really does it cuts off the lust of the flesh 
But what do we do? We've got to love the, the truth. We've got to love that sword. You know, which sword do you have? You know, you have a sword of religion or you have a sword of Christ. You know, the sword of the spirit. And that sword will cut off that, uh, that desire. And it, and it says here that he who raised Christ from the, from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. All right, so that means that sin will no longer have dominion over you. All right, that lust for, for whatever it is that you want in your life, that you're craving for that false comfort, that thing that you've replaced the love of God with, because that's what addiction is, is it's just replacing the love of God with, with a, a lie of the devil. All right, and remember, we spoke about arrested development. That spirit of arrested development does that. If you, there's a spirit called arrested development, and what it does is it channels you into everything, all right, that would lead you down a path of destruction. And, and one of them, all right, is lust, it's addictions, and uh, um, the pride of life. It's whatever it would distract you from knowing Christ, from knowing God. And it, put you in a place where you become spiritually immature, all right? It arrests your development in Christ. And that all comes out of a root of rejection, that spirit. And that brings in Jezebel and all the other spirits that network with arrested development. They use that spirit. They use gangs of spirits to lie to you and deceive you and entice you. Right, so we're, what's going to come against them and destroy them is, is, is the sword, the sword of the spirit. So addiction, what are we arousing, the flesh or the spirit? Okay, now God will save his people, Zechariah 9, 11. As for you also, because of the blood of your covenant, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Addiction is a waterless pit. Okay, you, if we're in addiction, what we've done is we've dug our own well. We've dug our own pit. Okay, and that's what the devil does. He'll get you to dig your own pit. All right, and what are you going to do? You're going to drink from that well. Well, I tell you what, it is in that wall, well are the waters of bitterness. All right, the waters of bitterness. And what was God's answer to the waters of bitterness when the, when the Israelites came across that well, that water? You know, they threw in um, hyssop, or they threw, they think it was hyssop they threw into it. And they're just throwing in, all right, a, a type and shadow of the tree of life, the cross. Okay. And that, what did that do? It made the bitter water sweet. So how do we come out of this well that we dug, all right, through the cross, all right, through Christ. He's the fountain of living waters. We've got to drink from him, draw from him, repent for digging your own well. Addiction is digging your own well. See that hole in the ground there? That's what happens when you get into addiction. You've allowed yourself. All right, through the lust of your flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and through false comfort, you've drawn from your own well. And that's what the Israelites did. All right, this stuff was written for our admonition. It's so that we could know, you know, for their mistakes, we, we know how to avoid them now. We've got the word, man. We, we're fully equipped. We've got everything at our fingertips. All right, to overcome everything. God's put it all in his word here. All right, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. Wow. So what's the stronghold? The stronghold is Christ. All right. Uh, you prisoners of hope, the, the stronghold is the Lord, a strong and mighty tower run into him. All right, and um, draw from him. He's the fountain of living waters. Okay, that fountain of living waters is going to, that, that, he's going to take you out of that well when you repent for sitting down in the bottom of it. You know, there is a, there is a way out, you know. Um, God, God's made a way. Look, he didn't put a flight of stairs in there for you to get out. All right, 
and he'll put his angel with you. You know, this is something that's amazing. You know, the Lord will will put an angel or angels with you to help you. You know, you've got the Holy Spirit there. He's our comforter now. He's our, he's, he's the one that will lead us into all truth because he does and, and says everything that the uh, that Jesus um, is directing him to do. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't act on his own. Jesus doesn't act on his own. All right. The Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord are one. They all work together. And that's who will deliver us and lead us out from that pit. They will send their angel. One of the amazing things the Lord showed me is the angel, he'll put his angel next to you. He put an angel with you, angels to guide you and, and help you and protect you. You've got angels around you, man. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, you know, it says also that, that they have, um, you know, oh, I'll come to that one. I've got, a, I've got another slide on that one. All right. Um, uh, okay. So here, I, I've got so much material here. Um, I'm going to go right now. Just give me a second. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go to the roots of rejection now. Awesome teaching. Praise God. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Um, look, we, yeah, remember we spoke about the, um, uh, the <laughs> you know, the, this is like a type and shadow of the tree of uh, knowledge and good and evil, you know. It's man's way, man trying to do things his way, roots of addiction. Let's, uh, you know, I'm going to come back later on to, I won't do it in this teaching, but we'll come back there another because there's, whole areas there which um, I want to address uh, so here. All right, so one of the big keys to deliverance as well is James 4, and we'll go there later on, and, and I'm just going to quickly read through it because I don't, there's so much here. God's armed us with so much uh, revelation on how to escape the snare of the devil uh, but, you know, one of the things that I've noticed with people that are enslaved with addictions is pride and it's Leviathan, all right? I've come across it last night even with a sister, all right? They don't want to be helped, man. They want to wallow in their self-grief and, and, and they want to milk the system. They want to milk their situation in their own rejection, okay, and false comfort. And you've got to be careful of that. You've got to repent because it, James 4, this is a big key for overcoming addiction, all right? And uh, you, can, you can write it down. Uh, James 4, chapter 7. But it says here in verse 6, sorry, I'll back up. Uh, but he who gives more grace, therefore he says... God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Okay? You see, addiction is double-mindedness. All right? Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. All right. Uh, do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaks evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Therefore, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and destroy. 
who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say today or tomorrow. All right, okay. I just added that bit on because one thing we found, all right, is um, um, a lot of judgmentalness going on here. And, and Bible, the Lord's saying here, you know, one of the big uh, areas that a lot of people don't get set free. We pray for a lot of people with addictions, man. And we want to see them get set free. And, and the Lord wants to see you get set free. But pride is what holds you. All right. And that pride is in, in, um, in, in your false comfort. You made that thing an idol. So idolatry comes in here. And what is hooked in with idolatry is stubbornness. Stubbornness is as the sin of idolatry. And people that are snared by the devil, okay, have made this addiction their comfort. It's their rock. It's what they stand on. All right. So, you know, when you're taking away that addiction, you're taking away their security. All right. They've made those things their security, all right? And this is where um, um, we need to humble ourselves. We've got to renounce pride, renounce Leviathan, and uh, submit to God, all right? All right, so roots of addiction, trained by saving grace, okay? So we're going to look at that picture in a minute because it's got, it's, uh, it's got a lot of stuff there which... Uh, as a revelation and will show you what we're talking about. And, you know, see that, that ground that that thing sitting in, all right, that dirt, that is the flesh. That is your flesh. That's your old man, all right? That is the part of your you that Christ, all right, has, in order to set you free, okay, had to crucify. So Jesus crucified his own flesh. He allowed himself to be crucified in his old flesh. His that old that body that Jesus lived in, all right, was crucified. So when you come to Christ, you are now crucified with him. So that that old body where that ground is, see that brown dirt where that tree sits in, that's your flesh. So when that dies, guess what? That root dies. How awesome is that? All right, that that ground is your flesh. That's the old carnal nature of Adam. That's feeding those roots. It's feeding loneliness, fear, shame, grief, anger, hereditary factors. That's something else which I'll come to in, in another teaching is overcoming uh, uh, addiction through um, ancestral curses. All right, so there's a little bit involved here, but the fundamental area that the Lord really wanted, thank you, Jesus, <laughs> amazing, the Lord's amazing. He wants us to understand is the flesh. That flesh, that old carnal nature of Adam is what feeds all of those roots, all right? It feeds it, man. And what's God's answer to that is death. When you get crucified with Christ and you you crucify that carnal nature, now that's <laughs> there's a power in that your flesh, man, and, and it's not something which when you come out of agreement with something, it's going to cost you. It'll cost you. You're going to have to, all right, give it up. We all have to give it up, whatever it is. All right, but you know what? G giving it up is the path to life and truth. And afterwards, you'll look back and you'll go, oh, my goodness, you know, what was I thinking, you know? And what you were thinking was that mind of that carnal mind and mind of the flesh because the carnal mind and the, the flesh is an enemy of God. All right, so Titus 2.11, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us 
from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So are we zealous for the life of Christ? Are we zealous for this, the, the, the life of the Spirit in Christ Jesus? We have to be zealous for it. Okay, is it, it, is, it is so important to understand that it is by his grace we overcome every addiction. And, it, and it's repentance, okay, through repentance, and it's through humility, all right, and it's through resisting the devil, okay, which we've been given all the weapons to do. We've been given power over the devil. He's under our feet. So, so when we allow the emotions to control us, we actually allow the enemy to block the power of his, of his spirit. This is why we must come boldly to the Lord by faith in what he says about us, not what the enemy has told us. So it's casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. So here we see in the picture, all right, the root of addiction. But you can see the gambling, the sex, the drugs, false religion. You see, false religion, religion is is a is an addiction. You know, and I've noticed that a lot with uh, so many Christians. They have been so mind controlled by Luciferian end time mind control spirits that they've accepted a form of Christianity that is nothing to do with scripture, all right? And it's not the true church because they have accepted another Jesus, a false Jesus, all right? And don't get me started on that, all right? But I just have to mention that. So we get mind controlled, you know? The Lord, the Satan will mind control us, all right? And, and we're not able to see. He puts scales over your eyes. So you can't see the truth. And here what, what happens in a, with, um, uh, with deliverance, you know, we can attack all these things, but they're not the root. The roots. We need to, the Lord to pull the roots out. Okay? But, you know, where are the roots sitting? And this is another one. Where is it sitting? In the soil of addictions. What is the soil of addictions? The soil of addictions is that uncrucified flesh that people have, have um, submitted themselves to. All right. We just read through that, didn't we? Romans 6. All right. Romans 7. All right. Understanding that. And what's the answer to that is another tree. What replaces that tree? What, what pulls that tree out? Okay, it's the cross. Okay, we've got to allow Christ to, we've got to identify with our, in our baptism what baptism is all about. You know, and what did John the Baptist do? He preached repentance, the, the prepare the way of the Lord. You know, prepare the way of the kingdom. What's the kingdom about? The kingdom is about repentance. Repent. You know, and that's what um, that's what this um, this um, message of the cross is all about. It's about repentance. It's about changing direction. All right, coming out of sin. All right, and changing direction. So, with deliverance, what happens with a lot of deliverance? Um, we can see in this picture, we we can be inclined to attack the foliage. All right, the branches, but not attack the root. And this is why in a lot of cases with, uh, you know, when we do deliverance, uh, people don't get set free because they we haven't uh, pulled the roots out. You know what, we've got to get the root. And, you know, we've got to actually till the soil first. You know, we've got to actually, you know, well, what's the soil all about? You know, the Lord's just showing me right now Okay, thank you, Jesus. It's about the heart. You know, what, what, what is it? God says, you know, he promised that he will give us a new heart, all right? The circumcision of the heart, a new heart, all right? 
Now, what's that new heart? That new heart that he gives us replaces that heart of stone. So when you look at that, you can see that that root is going down into that rocky, hard-hearted heart of stone. All right? And God's answer to that, that old heart is, um, is um, the cross. It's got to be crucified. It's got to be put to death. All right? So when you deal with that, that old heart, the old heart has to be nailed to that cross because that when we come into agreement and we we by faith we come into the re, should i say revelation you come into the revelation of believing the message of the cross then what happens and you submit and humble yourself okay god is able to give you that new heart and when he puts that new heart in guess what that old rejection, loneliness, fear, shame, grief, and everything, they literally just wither and die. They can't live in the new heart. They can't. That stuff cannot live in that new heart. You know why? That new heart is the born-again man. That's Christ. That's Christ in you. You have his nature, his heart. Is there any rejection, shame, fear, guilt, loneliness, anger in, in, in Christ's heart? No. All right, well, that's whose heart we have now. It's part of the reconciliation at the cross. It's an exchange. At the, at, at the cross, there's an exchange. Your rejection, all right, for his love, his acceptance. Your shame, okay, for his victory over shame, for his right standing with God. With right standing and righteousness, there is no shame. With, with, without, with fear, there's perfect love. With loneliness, there's the comfort of the Holy Spirit. With grief, there's actually, all right, comfort and joy, all right, and peace. With anger, all right, God takes away the anger, all right, and he puts in there compassion, long-suffering, all right. Um, hereditary stuff he what he does is he cuts off that ungodly bloodline off you and you are now officially you are in actual fact the bloodline of jesus christ but what he does is he cuts off the flesh from being able to attack and have power over you because it's your flesh and this is what so many christian christian and christianity today don't understand all right, the nature of the flesh, the nature of the uh, that unredeemed soul, that part of the soul that needs to be sanctified through the washing of the word, which we read about in Romans 12. I'm going to read Romans 12, and we had there last week. Okay? So, um, all right, so generational curses, all right, uh, of addiction, all right, Leviticus, that's something, another area we need to just identify here because with, uh, with um, the power of the message of the cross, okay, what it does is it cuts off, all right, the iniquity that's in our, from our forefathers, you know, because it's, um, uh, you know, uh, wrote it down here. I'm just going to write down some reference. I'll give you some reference scriptures. To, uh, go through here. Uh, uh, I'll come back to them in a minute. Just lost my page there. I have them all written down here. Uh, okay, here they are. Ancestral sins. And curses, all right, Exodus 20, verse 5, okay, Leviticus 26, verse 40, Exodus 34, verse 7, Numbers 14, verse 18, Jeremiah 32, verse 18, 
in Ezekiel 18, verse 2. Now, what it talks about there is the sins of the forefathers had a hand on to the third and fourth generation. And for us, we need to um, uh, repent and ask uh, forgiveness for their sins, all right, because those sins were actually passed on to us. Now, we're not under the curse. A lot of Christians are like here and say, oh, brother, we're not under. No, we're right. We're not under the curse. But guess what? You've got to cut that thing off, all right, um, in Christ because that area of your soul might have power over you, all right? That area of the flesh, Satan has, has caused that addiction to be handed on to you. You're not under the curse. Praise God. You've got authority to cut it off. And how do you cut it off with the blood of Jesus? And once you've done it, once you've done it, it's done, it's gone. It has no power over you anymore, all right? And, uh, yeah, we had a guy in the, um, the ministry on Saturday night that was, you know, he couldn't get his head around the fact that generational curses could have power over a born again Christian. Well, they don't. But, you know, the fact is you live in a body a flesh that, that, the enemy is attacking you through, and that thing needs to be um, dealt with. And uh, I said to him, well, look, you know, you might not understand it, but it's the word, and just wait. Just be quiet, watch, and learn. Well, he did, and, man, God just demonstrated, and people got delivered from ancestral stuff, and it got broken, and they got delivered, and now he's going, wow, that's amazing, you know. So addictions can come down through your bloodline through the sins of your ancestors, and insurance companies know that. How many Christians do you know that um, suffer uh, addiction to something? How many do you know? Well, that's a curse. Well, yeah, we're not under the curse, but we've got to repent, and you know, for us to be truly, all right, walk in the fruit of the Spirit, you can call yourself a Christian all you like, but that might not make you a Christian, all right? Christians are one that bear fruit, okay? They bear fruit to, to righteousness in Christ, okay? They are God's true anointed called out ones that are bearing fruit. If you're not bearing fruit, guess what? You know, the Bible, the word says it's like a branch that doesn't bear fruit, gets cut off. Now, we've got, we're not under the curse, all right, but we've got and we got power over the curse because Christ has redeemed us from the curse. So we need to, all right, exercise our authority over anything that might have come down through our bloodline and say, Father, we just ask right now I come out of agreement with this curse, Lord, in Jesus' name, and I ask forgiveness for my sins and the sins of my forefathers right now. I cover them with the blood. I cut off their son godly bloodline right now in Jesus' name. I renounce the spirit or whatever, I renounce any vows, oaths uh, that I might have made or my forefathers made. I break any ungodly covenants in Jesus' name, any ungodly blood sacrifice, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit will show you. It's done, cut off. The devil's got no more ground. He's got to go. He gets kicked out, all right? Leviticus 2, verse 40, but if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their unfaithfulness in which they were in faith unfaithful to me and that they also have walked contrary to me and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. You see, that's what this stuff will do. It'll bring you into the land of your enemies and there's no rest. You know, with addictions, there's no rest. If their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they accept their guilt, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. I will remember. All right, so he's going to deliver you out of the curse. And he does. It brings us out through the blood of Jesus. You see, the blood of Jesus has now completely annihilated all right, the law of sin and death, the curse. It's completely smashed it, but it comes out and it is destroyed by our confession. It's like how you got saved. How did you get saved? 
you confess, believe with your heart and confess with your mouth. It's the same with getting delivered. You're delivered from addictions, delivered from whatever it is. You get delivered by confessing with your mouth, believing with your heart first, and then confessing with your mouth. Because then the iniquity and the leaven in your heart is dealt with. And it's purging out the leaven, you know. People celebrate, you know, Passover, and they call it, you know, Easter. I don't know why they call it some pagan festival, all right. Uh, that just amazes me that churches have adopted uh, a pagan festival. Um, but the whole thing about uh, Passover is, you know, redemption and freedom from slavery to addictions. All right, and it's scraping out the lemon. The whole thing with the Passover in Exodus was they scraped out, they literally had to remove all the leaven, which represented sin in their lives. And that's a type and shadow of us coming out of bondage, is repenting and, and coming out of agreement with all our uh, iniquity in our heart. And then we confess it with our mouth and um, God, God um, honors that. And, it, and he remembers his covenant with us. You know, and that's what we do with communion, isn't it? With communion, we are celebrating the covenant that God has with us. And, and Satan has no answer for it. All right. We're redeemed from out of the hands of the devil without us, out of slavery. Remember, we were speaking about slavery. Ezekiel 18, 1, the word of the Lord came to me saying, what do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel saying, oh, yeah. My father have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. All right. That's talking about, okay, ancestral curses of um, uh, bitterness, you know. Especially to do, oh, there's so much, so much there with unforgiveness and um, bitterness getting handed on from generation to generation. You know, it's why they have all these wars all through history. Um, murder and strife, uh, addictions. Exodus 34, 6, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, by no, no means, here we go, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. All right? Now, we've been redeemed from that, but how do we get redeemed from it? By believing with our heart and confessing with our mouth. All right? And it is stop, and that's how you overcome sin in your life. You come out of agreement with iniquity in your heart because iniquity dwells in the heart. It's like a dollar idols in your heart. All right, we come out of agreement with them. We ask forgiveness. We humble ourselves. We, re we repent. It says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Well, that will, this is all part of resisting the devil. When it says resist the devil, that's what it means. We come out of agreement with him. Okay, we confess our sins. We ask forgiveness, and God is is merciful and faithful to forgive us our sins okay unconditionally he just does it he loves us so much and we're no longer under that power and that authority of gen of here with generational but also of addictions so you know just i'm gonna end it right here but i just want to go back and just remind you right that with addiction okay addiction Okay, it's like a tree, isn't it? It's like the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Where are you drawing from? You are drawing, you've dug your own pit, you're in the flesh, you're drawing from your own well, and those wells dry up, man. Your own well will dry up. The devil is a hard taskmaster. He's going to entice you with sin. You're going to think it's wonderful for a little while, but he's a hard taskmaster, and he's going to come back for his pound of flesh. All right, because the de devil does not forget. All right, he's going to come back and he operates through your flesh. All right, that old nature, that carnal nature of, of Adam, through the flesh. All right, so all that stuff is rooted in your old man. It's in that old flesh. 
And what do we need to do with that? You see, the demons can't dwell in a dead body. When that body dies, all right, it's no longer I that live. It's Christ that live in me now. You've crucified those passions. It's what happens when you get crucified. You've crucified loneliness, fear, shame, guilt, anger, rejection. All right, and all that stuff is the main root of that is rejection, and that is unloved. So what is the, the new the new the new uh, man is all about abiding in God's love. So God's love now you're rooted in love because in that flesh is only darkness and hate and uh, everything that's evil. I mean, you want to read it? I'll just close with this. Um, I'm just going to go to Galatians. Uh, Galatians uh, 5, because it's very important for us to identify with this nature. Okay, the nature is okay of the flesh. Okay, right, Galatians 5. Okay, so here it says, all right, all right. Uh, all right, but if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these two, are, these are contrary to one another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. Well, let's read that again. Oh, wow. That's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that amazing that, all right. So if you're led by your flesh, you're going to do the things that you so that you do not do the things that you wish. All right. And we went through all of that with Romans six, didn't we? And Romans, sorry, Romans seven. Uh, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. You see, where all these roots are um, um, growing, they're all abiding in okay the law of sin and death all right and the strength of sin is the law now you might have trouble getting your head around that one all right but you go under the old law you're going to strengthen sin because the strength of sin is the law all right now it's not saying the law is unholy the law is holy and good but it was never able to justify flesh because of the weakness of the flesh, because of what Adam did. Adam allowed the flesh to be corrupted, and there was no way that you trying to keep a bunch of rules and regulations and laws was going to redeem yourself from the, okay, from the curse, from the strength of sin and death. It was a law, okay? So the only way God could do that, all right, was through the cross, Okay, so he had to crucify, okay, that old carnal man and put it to death. All right, so now it says, for if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Okay, because the law, what the law does is strengthen sin because the law was put there for you to know what, or the Jews to know what sin was. It wasn't put there to justify man because it says if righteousness was through the law, then Jesus died in vain. There was no point for him to come. But obviously the law couldn't make anyone whole, anyone righteous, and no one was ever made righteous through the law. But God put it there so that we could know what sin was. So now it says, now it says the works of the flesh are evident. All right, so let's read them, which are. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hate, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, okay, heresies, murders, um, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries. You know, you look at drunkenness, you know, that's to do with alcoholism, revelries, and here, selfish ambitions, all these uh, addictions of, uh, you know, um, gambling, work, sports, drugs, 
nothing wrong with sport as long as you don't make it an idol okay and, you, and and it becomes lord over your life and you worship it anything that you put before god here is idolatry alcohol uh, drugs um you know self medicating self medicating in fact one of the biggest addictions today is is prescribed drugs all right sex uh false religion you know people have and this is what really oh man I see it so much, people in false religion. They made an idol out of traditions of men, out of churchianity, and not actually um, following the real Jesus. You know, and, and not even understanding what the true church is all about. Okay, so um, it says here, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and all these things are just revelries. Uh, and the like, and the like, all these addictions of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's why the devil uses this stuff, all right, to stop you from walking in your inheritance, okay, in Christ. But the fruit of the Spirit, all right, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So, all right, I'm just going to finish here, right? Finishing on that note. Um, so what I want you to know is that there is there is a way, and its way is through the message of the cross. You want to know how to overcome addiction? Understand the message of the cross. And what we were talking about before as well was James 4, all right, about humbling yourself and submitting to God, resisting the devil, and he will flee. All right, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleansing your hands, you sinners. Okay, so what's that about? Purifying is about purifying your hearts. Whoa, you double-minded. Oh, gosh. Oh, so, oh, my goodness. So, um, you know, abiding in addiction, it is double-mindedness, you know. You know, he who knows to do good, and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. So you've got to come out, you've got to repent, you know. Uh, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, isn't it? That's what, I'll, that's what And, you know, we've all got to come to it, all right, because, you know, it's only by his grace and his love do we escape the snare of the devil um, through his mercy and the gift that he's given us in the power of the Holy Spirit, all right. So it's by the... By the power of the Holy Spirit, through his blood, his shed blood, it's a miracle that we get delivered. And it's it now, you see, now through the new covenant, we overcome sin because we take on his nature. It's a gift. We get the mind of Christ. So our mind actually gets transformed to become his mind, his thoughts even become our thoughts. How powerful is that? How would you like to have the thoughts of God? Well, that's what happens when you walk in the spirit. You get the thoughts of God. Your mind actually becomes renewed and you take on the nature of Christ. So you become holy and you walk as him, all right, not through anything you did by trying to keep a whole bunch of rules and regulations, you get actually transformed through the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit through grace. That's the, that's the miracle saving power of the cross because the message of the cross is the power of God. It's by his spirit, not by our works. So then we enter in and we enter into this perfect rest. Now, I've got other um, um, stuff there I wanted to cover, but I've just run out of time. Um, and one of them, all right, and I'll go over that next time, is talking about the five kings, you know, in Joshua. Uh, they represent the five senses. And what are we, are we, we to do? We're, we're to um, um, 
take their heads off, literally. We take the head of the enemy off with the sword, with the word of God. And that's how you overcome. Amen. So um, we'll just end it there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for um, giving us understanding of what the true gospel is. Jesus said, you said you are the way, the truth, and the life. So, Lord, we just pray that you give us a greater revelation and understanding of who you really are and who you really show revealed yourself to be and how you walked, that we can walk, Lord, Lord, like you walked and talk as you talk and, Lord, love as you loved. But also, Lord, resist the devil and take authority of the devil and make a public spectacle of the devil as you did, that we would know the real way because you said you are the way and you didn't tolerate the devil. And, Lord, as it said, you said to the church of um, Thyatira, I have, you know, you've done so well, but I have this against you, all right? So, Lord, let us not tolerate evil, Lord, but cast it out confront it and not tolerate it. And, Lord, let us not tolerate, Lord, our addictions, but let us, Lord, scrape out the leaven and, Lord, cleanse our hearts and, Lord, repent and overcome um, evil, Lord, by your spirit through the work of the cross, through that precious, in your precious name, Jesus, who is the end of the law for righteousness. For your glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So I was meditating on all of this about two weeks ago. The Lord just dropped it in my spirit. Romans 6 and 7 and 8. You know, to really understand the nature of the flesh, addiction, how to overcome. And it's not just addictions. I mean, you know, when, when we look at it, it really is uh, leading the, um, the crucified life is all about understanding how to um, overcome everything. Any, any area. Amen, I agree. Thank you, Lord. Man. Any questions? Comments. Hey guys, sorry, it's kind of uh, busy. Um, yeah, somebody had asked in the start if, uh, let's see, I think it was sexual molestation and uh, child abuse could lead to addiction. Uh, yes, because what the devil does is he brings in um, 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 fear and all these spirits that will um, bring in uh, false comfort and, and uh, addictions and arrested development. Uh, they entice you. They demons. What they when they get you get sexually uh, abused. They, the enemy literally snares you, you know, and it's no fault of your own. It's just the nature of the devil, you know. Um, they entice you. So demons entice you into slavery and into sin. That's what the demons do. But they, yeah, they're, they're, um, they're, um, they they have a kingdom and their kingdom is uh, kingdom of darkness. So hey, they all work together for one objective. They use just addiction as as one of the 
the weapons that they have to um, lead people to death, to destroy them, to kill, steal, and destroy. So, yeah, it's all sin, no matter what it is. You know, sin, in effect, works in gangs. They work in gangs. They don't work on their own. Demons work together. Kingdom divided against itself cannot stand, and that's what Jesus said. Um, you know, Satan's kingdom is not divided. And that's what he was talking about then. He was talking about Satan's kingdom. Satan's kingdom is not divided. It works together as an army, all right? And, and all Satan demons have... Um, assignments and they have different functions so you know you just got to understand that all things in god's kingdom work for good but in satan kingdom all things all things all demons work together for evil <laughs> i can explain it like that thank you amen uh there's some more questions in the chat guys i gotta cut this live stream though pete can you pray us out real quick okay God, Lord, we just thank you for your word, Lord. We just uh, ask that, Lord, you just uh, prepare the ground in, in everyone's heart that would listen to this message, Lord, that the word would go in and, Lord, that you would water it, Lord, and it would produce um, um, the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, and uh, glorify you that you said that you would build your church, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for giving us revelation and understanding on um, how to overcome um, addictions, whatever they are, Lord, because uh, it's all idolatry, Lord, and, and we just repent. We just ask, Lord, that you give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us, Lord, and, and anoint the message, Lord, that it would bring um, a, a harvest for your glory, Lord, that you, that you said you would build your church and the gates of uh, hell will not prevail against it, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that as we just said, a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So, Lord, we just ask you right now to give us understanding, Lord, on uh, your kingdom, uh, how it's not divided, but it abides in perfect love, but the enemy's kingdom abides in fear and um, shame and guilt and everything that's evil. And, Lord, we don't want a part of that. We just want to be, Lord, firmly planted in you, that we, we may dwell in your perfect rest, knowing, knowing that all our enemies are defeated and that they have no power over any of us unless we let them and unless we come into agreement, which, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to give us the power to overcome in your strength and not ours but in yours, but that we may be obedient and repent, Lord, and submit and humble ourselves that we may know you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We agree. Thank you, Jesus.